July, yeah. late July, and uh, you actually didn't come on until August, did you, with us? And uh, yeah. a welcome addition, but you were a little slow, to tell you the <laughs> truth. But he, he sped up the pace, and now we got him on a little yeah. earlier now. Nothing, welcome aboard a little sooner. Thank you. Nothing like moving up in the world. Nothing, <laughs> nothing like being able to work a little closer to you. That's an honor as well. Yeah, and indeed. Taking a look at the... <laughs> dubious distinction. <laughs> look at the old weather pattern, the upper-level flow. We're going to see a change in the upper-level flow. To some, that'll be, oh, just gung-ho. To others, they may... Well, when a meteorologist says the weather is boring, the general populace tends to agree that it's nice. The weather is going to be boring, so I guess the populace is going to agree. It's going to be nice over the next couple of days, but a bit chilly. Across the national weather map, we find low pressure moving out to sea. Another weak low causing a lot of slick stuff, lower Appalachians, lower Tennessee River Valley, and across North Carolina with snow sleet and some freezing rain. This mess will not come up. It moves out. As we had some Marvy Monday here, no real problems, but a messy one moving through northwest Texas with some freezing rain as well. It's 79 degrees off in West Palm Beach, reaching for the beach, delightful temperatures. But they're getting ready for some rough and tough weather out here. They'll be near blizzard conditions where it was 1 degree 2 o'clock this afternoon out in International Falls. 22 below this morning, and little rain, snow in the higher elevations of California, where Blue Canyon area had about 7 inches of the white stuff this morning. We'll take a bird's eye view from the uh, satellite shot, which will be depicting a lot of cloudiness, which is racing off to the east and southeast. This is the batch of cloudiness with the slick traveling conditions of the Carolinas, Tennessee, moving out to sea. No problems with it for us. Shifting further onwards to the east, you'll be able to see, first of all, Maine is in the clear. Oh, one tiny cloud may have seen it out in Millinocket. No problems otherwise. Clouds back in Burlington with some snow and the thicker clouds down here with no real trouble as the flow will be out to sea. How about the upper level flow that we're talking about Wednesday? This is a new pattern, I'm calling it. The reason for it, we're going to start seeing a northwesterly flow be a stubborn system up north of Newfoundland giving us colder weather in here. But the warmth will be growing down here and it's going to try to come up. Look for moderating temperatures during the latter half of the week. But with moderating temperatures, you can hold more moisture so it may get stormy and it will be stormy, blizzard blowing. Temperatures won't be growing out in here. A lot of problems with plunging temperatures, very heavy snow in the blizzard for Wyoming, uh, South Dakota, on in the direction of portions of Nebraska as well. No blizzard outside, temperature 20, dew point 7, relative humidity half of 150 percent, barometer 29.72 and rising. Winds are out of the northwest at about six knots, and the skies right now they're crystal clear. Crystal clear is the word for the next couple of days as well across the area. There are some cloudy pockets off to the southwest, but clear across much of Maine as you saw in the satellite. 22 in Holton, 25 off in Bar Harbor, 25 off in the direction of Augusta. Minus, oh boy, 27 degrees for high and also zero for a low. Should be 27 to 9, so a wee bit cold and a low. Tonight will be chilly as well. Metza, Metza Mercury, we'll say, oh, why not? It's just about average, just a little bit below, perhaps 33 in Boston, 31 Hartford, and some clouds with those snow showers, as I mentioned, off in the direction of Burlington, where it is 19. We'll continue the weather contest, getting all kinds of mail from this. Keep writing in how you would describe the cold, even though it may warm up. How cold do you think this January has been? Describe it in seven words or less, and send to Chili Chat, WVII TV, Bangor, Maine, 371 Target Industrial Circle, and that zip code is 04401, so just send them in, and how about if we read a couple of them, send your name, address, and phone number, a couple that we've gotten, and we'll be reading to you here, and, uh, well, I won't read that one, I picked that up randomly, I like my job, I'll skip that one, we'll go on to another one, it's so cold, they say a chatter in my bladder, how about a shiver in my liver, a bit polar for my molar, says Larry Whitney, Blue Hill, Maine, good one there, and also a good one, breathtaking, record-breaking, finger-numbing, spring coming, Question mark on that from Ginger DeBorg in Bangor, Maine. So keep sending them in, and we will get you off to the Greenhouse Restaurant in Bangor for a delicious meal if you win. And, of course, we'll read them here on Channel 7. BS, not what you think. It's blowing snow out in Newfoundland. Minus 3, Gander. Minus 4, Stephenville. Along the onshore areas, it is snowing. Sydney, we find minus 8 degrees northwesterly winds to minus 4 in Yarmouth. And, again, some northwesterly winds. Bit brisk out in this area with a brisk northwesterly flow. Clouds from Chatham and uh, Charlo northward. Otherwise, it's clear across much of New Brunswick as well. We'll take a check at the incomplete uh, forecast and the marine forecast coming up right after this message. Well, checking out the marine scene from Eastport down to the Merrimack River and up to 25 miles offshore, depicting west winds at 10 to 20 knots. Sea should average somewhere in the range of 2 to 4 feet. Visibility good to excellent, well over 5 miles, no problems, as the weather remains fair for the next 48 hours at least. So the forecast for Bangor, Brewer, and vicinity, no big deal either. For the remainder of tonight, it will be chilly, though. Clear cut, no problems, light northwesterly wind. Lows will be down in the lower single numbers and well below in the single numbers below zero off to the north and west through the county. Now for tomorrow, the way it appears, a fine shine, no problems at all. A beautiful day out there, but it will be a bit breezy with a northwesterly wind picking up. Highs will be in the lower 20s the way it appears now. The wind will make it feel a little chillier, but that's just a little bit below normal. Tomorrow night, same thing, clear sailing again. Still snappy though out there as temperatures fall down again to about 4 degrees Bangor. Single digits below zero to the north and west. 
And the way it appears for Wednesday, ditto, same old thing. Sunny, but it will still be snappy. Same temperature, highs in the lower 20s. Summation the next 48 hours, simply clear during the day, clear at night, and cold throughout, so no problems. Look into your crystal ball. Oh, anything possibly threatening us at this time as far as precipitation or dropping the murk? Yeah. Well, that yeah. upper-level pattern I was showing with the big storm, OS, everything's in a mush east, so that by the end of the week, mush, as mush move, <laughs> okay. press. That sounds like wet it. stuff. No? <laughs> it may be wet. Yeah. Hey, we may actually see some rain, which we haven't seen in a month. A big change in the pattern. It's going to get stormy towards the end of the week, but till then, enjoy. Okay, this chilly chat stuff, uh, are we, we going to have something in the spring looking ahead, some kind of... Uh, have you worked on anything for that? Oh, we, uh, my mind's always at work with <laughs> weather funnies. and uh, we I can't wait for you to come up with your next one. <laughs> I'm sure you're just sitting at home thinking about it every night. <laughs> okay, Ron. Okay. Well, up next. We'll I'll tell you, Ron, from the inside looking out today, it looked beautiful. But when I went outside, it was bitter cold. Get the goosebumps, huh? <laughs> nice and cold out there. I shouldn't say nice. Icy cold <laughs> out there. You know, it's 14 below right now outside Are you our kidding studios. Me? Is that cold enough you for you? You want to sleep here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I think I may just do that. If my car might not start. If my car doesn't start, I won't for sure. <laughs> bitter, bitter cold, but I'll tell you, the cold, clear air is going to continue cold and clear, and Old Man Winter has plenty more to spare. I'll tell you about it right after this. Well, we have certainly a chilly chunk, and our temperatures are going kaplunk. Downwards they go, and it's going to continue like that for much of the night, perhaps the coldest night of this season. Here's the national weather map, which is depicting a lot of fat flakes running from Massachusetts southward through New York City and New Jersey. We'll show you that shortly, with the rain stretching through the Carolinas and Georgia being displaced southeastward. 87, that was the high temperature for a record in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Think about it. Think hard. That's where it is, and it's not moving our way for quite some time to come. 88 degrees in Hollywood, Florida for a record, so plenty of warmth. If you're vacationing down there or any friends or relatives, they have nice warm toasty weather, but showers through central Florida. Guadalupe Pass was gusty today. Winds today with hurricane force and 75 miles per hour. Shivers and shakes out in this area. Very, very chilly. Six below Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and a few drip drops out in the Pacific Northwest, but this is going to develop into some snow with winter storm warnings northeastern Washington State into the Idaho Panhandle. We'll take an eye from the sky, which is first of all depicting cloudiness stretching through Florida with those scattered showers, but warm and humid to the south. Plenty of clear skies through the midsection of our country. Clouds stacking up in the Appalachian Mountain chain. Let's go to the northeast. There you go. We're checking Maine. Plenty of clear skies. Therefore, our temperatures are taking a tumble, falling backwards quickly. Some clouds out in Vermont and off to the south. It's been snowing in Massachusetts and long portions of Long Island for the past 24 hours or so, where well over half a foot of snow has fallen. This is what it looked like. We made it by the skin of the t our teeth again, folks. Just missing the snowfall. That's been the story. The year of the great escape, I'm calling it here in Maine. No snow for us, but New Jersey and Philadelphia and off in New York City, six to eight inches of snow, nine inches of snow over Cape Cod continues, and it's slowly abating in that area and falling apart as the storm whistles on out to sea. No major problems in the metropolitan areas. The snow blow is going here. Hey, our snow blows have had a well-deserved rest. Maybe we'll get them cranking up again, perhaps, by late next week. But it won't be until then, because the upper-level flow is a zonal flow, which means no big snow events here in the northeast, the way it appears. This is the way it'll be on Friday. Mini mercury, very, very cold temperatures. And these red areas up on your color sets up in the north here is actually warm air coming from the Atlantic and back around. And what that means is it's going to start to warm up from the north. We may have a little snow flurry activity Friday. Cope with the upslope snow in the Rockies. And terrific, call it terrific, we'll coin it, not terrific. It'll be raw and rainy running out in the direction of California. Not all that nice out there. Outside our studios, the current Bangor temperature is 4 below at the airport. As I said, 14 below. Would you believe here at the station still falling? Dew point 19 below. Relative humidity 41%. The barometer 29.91, almost exactly average sea level pressure. Winds northwest at 6 knots, and the skies are crystal clear. Don't have to go all that far to find the cloud line, though, is running through Portland and off to the south and then southwest. High 14, low minus 3. We'll be lucky to make that tomorrow. Double digits, well, not to be found across much of Maine. These are single ones. When we make double digits, there'll be double digits below zero, so not the nice kind. Teens to the south with snow. This snow is light through Boston and Providence, and light winds out in Burlington with a temperature of a big goose egg out there as well. How about back in history on this date, February the 6th, 1978? I remember this one very, very well. I was out dancing in this one, the greatest snowstorm in modern history for southeastern New England. The blizzard of 78, the snow was up over my head. It doesn't say much. I'll tell you how tall I am, but it was a lot of snow. 27.2 inches of snow at Boston with big drifts, 38 inches in Rhode Island. Boston was snowbound, all traffic banned for a week by the governor's decree as the very cold air moved in with strong northwesterly winds. Out in Newfoundland, 
Windy words, strong northwest winds, 21 below zero Celsius, both at Gander and Stephenville. That's below zero, about six below Fahrenheit, minus 21, minus 20 Chatham. A cold mold. It sounds as bad as it is out here with the strong northwest winds to 20 below zero Celsius out in the direction of St. John. Wednesday night, Sky Scan Stumper Night. I wouldn't put you down. You've been waiting for this ever since the weekend, I'm sure. We'll check out the Sky Scan Stumper for tonight. The oldest and most widely used material to measure atmospheric humidity is A, wood, B, hair, C, skin, or D, bathing suits. We'll have the answer to that Sky Scan Stumper. Don't take a swim yet. The answer to that Sky Scan Stumper and the forecast coming up right after this. Well, let's check out the uh, Sky Scan Stumper one more time and uh, get the answer to this. The oldest and most widely used material to measure atmospheric humidity. Well, Carrie said wood. It is B, hair. <laughs> yes, hair. You heard it here first. It is hair. And believe it or not, when your humidity goes from zero to 100 percent, your hair length actually can increase two and a half percent. So tonight, if your hair is short, don't worry. You're not going bald or anything. It's very, very dry out there. And hair has been used in many instruments. It's most widely used hair hygrometers. It's the pivotal mechanism. It'll actually move the pin and cause graphs. It'll show the graph of the humidity. So here is the answer to that. How knowledgeable it can be here on 7, huh? <laughs> Marine scene, small craft advisory in effect. Winds north, northwest, 15 to 25 knots. Seas average four to eight feet. Now they'll subside from here on into tomorrow, three to six feet. Visibility variable to one to three miles. Arctic sea smoke and any light snow offshore will be ending tonight. So the forecast for Bangor, Brewer, and vicinity. For the remainder of tonight, we are looking at mainly moonlit skies. It'll be a bit breezy. Temperatures falling to about 11 below at the airport. If it makes 11 below, that will be the coldest night so far this entire season. The coldest so far has been 10 below. For tomorrow, a very chilly day with sunny skies and a blah breeze. Not nice at all. Would you believe highs tomorrow will struggle into the lower teens? The winds will make it feel like 20 below zero, believe it or not. For tomorrow night, we're looking at a star cloud combo as some of those clouds t start to come in from the north. It'll be biting lows around one below zero to 20 below in a wind chill factor. And my outlook for Friday, changeable skies, very windy out of the northwest, and you've got a uh, risk of some snow flurries. Highs struggling only into the teens again. So we've got a cold, dry pattern. You've heard it all before, and you're going to get it again. Ron, tell me why this is. The airport is about three miles away from us. Why is their temperature always less than ours? Well, there's always little what we call mesoscale effects. But, mesoscale? Uh, the, the, yeah, mesoscale, <laughs> you know, meteorology lingo here. But uh, the small effects on thermometers can be a great It doesn't change. make any difference. It's very cold anyways. Yeah, All you right. wouldn't feel the four-degree change. All right, thanks a lot. Ron, this match. So I guess you've been running around here for the past hour and a half. There's been some changes in the weather forecast. Uh, a couple of changes. Uh, not till Friday, though. But tonight's uh, a night for the wild and weird, so I feel right at home. You know, the big <laughs> full moon. You know, the big full moon. Earlier I said that Friday would make you want to go out and sing a tune. But now if you go out Friday and sing a tune, you may be in rain or even snow. Mm. Big change. I'll tell you about it after this. Well, tonight the wind is nearly nil, but we certainly have the chill, and indeed the coldest night of the year is in jeopardy. But I don't think we're going to get it right here in Bangor, but many of the outlying areas will drop to near 10 to 15 below zero tonight. The reason for it, the culprit national map shows high pressure, and this has what I'm calling a split personality, the cold mean side over us now, but on the back side, warm and nice, and that's what's going to try to come in later tomorrow and on Friday. Northwesterly winds, limestone at 2 o'clock this afternoon, 13 for the coldest in the nation. But look at this again, Florida taking it 86 in Homestead, nice and warm and toasty. Oh, I can see the waves crashing ashore with the sunset down there. We're on back to Bangor. Okay, out to the west, the warm air starting to come in on a gusty groove. Strong winds running from Texas all the way into the Dakotas here. Out in Park City, Utah, to near 60 miles per hour sustained winds. And they're eating the feet. I'm talking snowfall, nearly two feet. And they may get two more feet in the Sierra Nevadas tonight. Heavy snow warnings and winter storm warnings with some precipitation along the coast running from Washington down towards central California as well. Now the late night satellite is showing first of all, look at the complete clear skies up and down the Atlantic seaboard. Some clouds developing out in the Midwest and South where that could be a problem. More on that shortly. How about to the Northeast and we'll see what's over New England. Plenty of clear skies, just a couple lonely clouds off in the Holton area, but look at off to the South. Complete clearing all the way down. Just a couple of clouds down in the Carolinas as well ensuring us that tomorrow should be quite sunny. Now here's the problem that I'm talking about, your surface map, bio Friday morning. Hey, this is Mickey's Mercury, nice and warm, 70s for lows near 80 in some areas, jumping up to 90 during the day. Then we'll have this flaky front, that's not the big deal. It appears by latest guidance there'll be a weak low developing on the front right about in here as it swings on through. And we'll be on the rain snow line here and there could be some considerable precipitation. So if you have any plans on Friday, big change in the forecast. 
Earlier I was talking sunny in 50s. Now out to the west, not a flaky front, but they'll have a stormy stunt with more precipitation moving in on the west coast. Outside our studios, temperature dropping quickly down to 12. It's 8 outside our studios, dew point minus 1. Relative humidity computing out to a pair of fives in your barometer, 30.58, way up there with that big high moving in and still rising. Winds out of the west at about five knots, and when they go to calm, the temperature will drop like a rock. Skies are clear cut. You saw it on the satellite. Hardly a cloud to be seen, mountain top to seashore. Now we'll take a look at the high today of 22. Very chilly, the low of nine. Eight degrees out in Greenville already. Holton usually takes the cake in these situations with little wind. Already six below. They'll be near 15 to 20 below by morning. 19 in Portland, 25 Boston. Look at the sevens all across Vermont. From Montpelier, Burlington down to Lebanon and calm. 24 down in Hartford. So trim, slim temperatures. And this will be a very, very chilly night. Zero or below across much of the tri-state area. How about back in history on this date, March 6, 1962, weathermania milestone, Great Atlantic Coast storm of 62, over $200 million in property damage running from New England to Florida, extensive coastal erosion from Long Island to North Carolina as well, 70 mile per hour winds causing 40 foot waves, if you can imagine that, and 33 inches of snow in the Virginia mountains back in 1962. In contrast to today, you saw not a cloud to be had up and down the entire Atlantic seaboard. Out in Newfoundland, we find northerly winds not too strong, but very, very cold. These are single numbers below zero on Fahrenheit, minus 19 Gander, minus 22 off in the direction of Steamville. The chill is choking them, and they're going to have trouble starting the cars tomorrow morning. Northerly winds, minus 16 in the Halifax to minus 13 Chatham and St. John with the northerly winds. And the cold hold out in this entire area, a very chilly night across the entire region, and it will slowly warm up tomorrow, but we could have a change on Friday. We'll take a look at that in the forecast and the marine scene coming up right after this. Well, running from Eastport to the Merrimack River and up to 25 miles offshore, the marine scene is depicting we're going to get into a southerly flow after the light north to northwest winds of tonight, 10 knots or less than tomorrow, south to southwest, 10 to 20 knots, sea subsiding to 1 to 3 feet, visibility will be lowering to one to three miles because there'll be a little bit of light snow moving in tomorrow night as that warm front spreads over the coastal waters, but nothing too heavy. Friday may be a problem. So you forecast the way it has changed. This is different if you saw the forecast at six for the remainder of tonight. We have that full moon, but an empty thermometer. There won't be much alcohol or mercury sticking up in the glass of those thermometers. It'll be cold. Low about two below the way it looks right in the city here. But as low as 10 to 15 below, just to the north and west, 20 below Clayton Lake area and Van Buren. And as you saw, Holton's already six below. For tomorrow, we are going for brilliant beginning. Lots of sunshine. That'll hold most of the day. And there'll be a few wispy clouds in the afternoon, but not to impinge on the sunshine. Look at that. Highs in the lower 30s compared to today's lower 20s, so it will be warmer than it was today. Now, for tomorrow night, we're looking for a cloud cover. Very windy out of the south, pumping in the warmer air. Lows only in the mid-20s compared to tonight's sub-zero readings. But a period of light snow is possible. Nothing really to write home about. We saw a much heavier snow. And the outlook, the way it appears for Friday now, we've changed it from sunny and in the 50s to unsettled, light winds, high of 40. What does unsettled mean? It means the meteorologist doesn't know exactly what's <laughs> happening quite yet. But we do have a slight change of some rain or snow, the way it looks right now. Probably some rain, maybe even some wet snow mixed in. Mountains could get several more inches. So a change for Friday. We'll know much more tomorrow. All right, we're expecting about two below tonight as a low. Are we in the normal temperature range now? It should be uh, closer to the low to mid-teens for a low above zero. So. Well below. We're never right on track, are we? No, <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Ron. Okay. Ron Harris is... We're never right on track, are we? No, <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Ron. Okay. Ron Harris is standing by with... Ron Liznet is standing by with the latest in sports action. Stay with us. Construction nationwide. Well, speaking of highways, I imagine they all got cleared up around the nation today, including Maine. Not too bad. Uh, everyone's... Uh, Cleaning up and no big deal with the snowfall now. Everything's starting to it's wind on history, down. It's all history, right? Just about history, and I'm happy I got my snowstorm. The kids are happy out of school. <laughs> the skiers, only people that had to travel had a little trouble, but it's all history, as you say. On Saturday, we had shirt sleeves in the 50s. Yeah. Today, the shovelies shoveling it out, and tomorrow, lovelies, if you will. Nice <laughs> weather on the way. I'll tell you about it after this. Well, winter is back, and with a pretty good, nice snowpack across the area, many areas getting 6 to 12 inches, some areas 14 and 15 inches of the white stuff. And we can see the reasons, the culprit for it, the national weather map, which is depicting the low-pressure system, which is starting to move on and sweep off in through the Maritimes with the snowfall. Residual low breaking off into New England, nothing too heavy with it. And it came in, uh, the warmer air bumping into the cold air, and we had a bumper-dumper, so to speak, with the colder air in this area, and everything's starting to squeeze out. We had a weak low develop on that warm front, and what that meant was three things. One, the colder air was left in. We didn't change to freezing rain. Two, well, 
Not as much wind because the low cut off the strong winds where they had 63 mile per hour gusts in Jonestown, Pennsylvania this morning. And number three, we stayed all snow as well, but we didn't get as much here in Bangor because that low cut off the moisture from the south. Upper 80s down in Jacksonville for a record today. Would you believe Kennedy Airport in New York City today was 66 for a record? The warm air came up all the way to Providence. It was 59, but a cold mold in the Midwest coming in for tomorrow. Winter warnings out in Nevada, Lake Tahoe Basin, and upper levels could get upwards to 2 feet over the next 24 hours. View from above is showing uh, the clouds starting to break out in the northeast. And look at this large envelope of clearing out in the Plain States working down through Florida. It's all coming in our direction. That means dazzling sunshine tomorrow. Now the clouds are starting to break up a lot more clear skies since 6 o'clock. Many of the clouds stacking in the mountains. Some residual cloudiness out in the Great Lakes area with a few flurries, but nothing too much to talk about. How about all this snowfall? Well, if the snow has got you down, it was like spring. Maybe this will shed some light on you. How about many of us, as you may know, have to, well, we have to shovel the snow out. Not all that fun. A lot of us, if not all of us, doing it. Some of us have to plow it. Part of the job, plowing the snow away. And still others would do anything, and I mean anything, just to get away from the snow. Far above, hey, look down on it, get away from the snow as high as you can go. And there are some of us that would love to get into it. I said into it, you got it, down into the snow. Oh, I remember back in college, plunked the old file on a Monday morning, and down I went out of the window in the snow as well. That's not me, though. Crazy, huh? I'm not all that crazy, am I? You've seen some others now. Out, let's take a look what's happening across the national map. The way it will appear, well, by tomorrow, the weather plan, sky scan showing a sizzling slice through Florida back into Texas. Nice and toasty, near 90 through central and southern Florida, working into the 80s down in Brownsville, Corpus Christi area. Big swath running through the midsection, bulging into the uh, Dakotas and Montana. Nifty and nice, going to start to come in here late Thursday and Friday. But tomorrow will be cold as ice, even in the northeast, with a strong northerly wind. Low wind chill factors and back to winter at least for the next 24 hours. Outside our studios, it's still chilly, already down, would you believe, to 11 degrees. The dew point seven, relative humidity of 83%. The barometer 29.92, and that's exactly average sea level pressure. Winds north-northeast at seven knots, and the skies at the present time are clear. Across New England's six state region, well, we have a lot of clouds out in the mountains, as we mentioned, out to the west. Not too much to talk about along the coastal plain. You saw it breaking up on the satellite. High today of 23 and the low of 8. We should have a similar low tonight. 18 off in the direction of Augusta. Still clouds and snow showers off to the north from Holton and northward. To the south, 34 degrees in Boston. Snow out eh, just a little bit out in Vermont. The Green Mountain State stacking up. Burlington and Montpelier in the 20s. A pretty picture if you're out there. Not too much wind and the snow pasting the countryside. Looking all pretty good as we've cleared up much of the roadways and traveling getting back to normal at this time. Well, we have a lot to talk about in the snow score. The snow really piled up in many areas. Phillips with the jackpot in these selected cities of snow with 14 inches of the white stuff. West Paris had 10 inches, Lowell 12 inches of the white stuff. Many areas 10 to 15 inches. Look at Bangor, bottom of the barrel only 5 inches as that low developed and sort of saved us cutting off the moisture supply and only 4 inches off in the direction of Eastport. But Saddleback, Sunday River, and Sugarloaf, all over a foot of snow. Sugarloaf, 30 trails, 8 lifts open, 24 to 50 inch base. So plenty of snow out there, plenty of fine skiing coming up for the weekend as well. Perhaps spring skiing as some warmer weather starts to head in our direction. How about across the Maritimes, light northeasterly winds. In fact, they're raging down along Avalon Peninsula. Heavy snow warnings in effect, minus 14 and minus 16. Minus 8 down to the south to minus 13 in Chatham with just a little bit of light snow. We'll check out the details of that forecast and the marine scene for you coming up right after this. Well, we're going to take a special feature tonight. I know you've wanted to see something like this. This is real, folks. The selected cities forecast across the area. These are actual towns across the country. I'm not making these up, believe it or not. Alligator Hole, West Virginia, sunny and 65. Nonsense Creek, Florida, toasty, sunny, 84. Big Bug, Arkansas, partly cloudy and 76. Rat, Missouri will be up to 63. Ding Dong, Harris, no. Ding Dong, Texas, mostly sunny and up to 76 degrees. Fried, North Dakota will be sunny and 47. And look at that ishy, pishy Falls, California will have some showers in 57. Climax, Oregon, showers in 53. So if you're headed out, hope that helps you. If you're traveling over this upcoming weekend, I know a lot of people are on vacation. So how about the week upcoming in terms of the weekend? Small craft advisory with the Marine scene winds. Well, 
will become westerly. 15 to 25 knots in west northwest tomorrow, 10 to 20 knots. Seas 3 to 6 feet subsiding slowly tomorrow to 1 to 3 feet. Visibility should be improving from here on out as the showers are mostly over, maybe a brief sprinkle. The clearing skies are setting in as I speak. So my forecast for Bangor, Brewer and vicinity. Remainder of tonight, well, there'll be some clouds around, also some clear skies. That means some splotchy skies and some mation. There may be a brief shower, probably of rain or snow, maybe snow here in Bangor, but I wouldn't count on it. Most of it's over. Lows will be dropping down into the lower 30s with an increasing northwesterly wind. For tomorrow, we'll call for a dandy day. Sun superior in the skies, very little cloudiness, delicious temperatures. Look at that, high near 50 here in Bangor and up to about, oh, 52 off in the direction of Reed. Tomorrow night, we're looking for a nice night. Starlit skies, high clouds moving in. That'll do it, though. Lows dropping down to 20. Very little wind to speak of. And my outlook for Sunday, ditto. Almost the same sun. A few clouds coming in and around the skies, but nothing big. Delightful digits again. Highs near 50 in the upper 40s with light southwesterly winds probably continuing into Monday. So we'll get a little spring fever on the way. That's the way it looks right now. Delightful and delicious. Those are definitely good words for it. I will eat it up. Where's Ishy Pishy Falls? <laughs> it's in California. I haven't had the pleasure of viewing it. Really, How about Big Bug, Arkansas? I like that. Yeah, nice place. Good research, Ron. We appreciate that. We work hard. <laughs> and I know that the weather's going to be so nice up in the mountains this weekend that you're going to do... Well, the clouds are beginning to thicken. They will give us a bit of a lick. It doesn't look like a major storm. We'll be watching it closely, though. There are still a few flies in the ointment, so to speak. Looking at the national weather map, big change since yesterday's forecast. We started seeing this last night at 11 o'clock, the change in the forecast. Today, certainly a thrifty Thursday. No problems. Nice sunshine, then giving way to the cloudiness. Coldest place in the nation, making headline news again. Holton, Maine, a very cold spot. And those communities are getting very cold with the low winds and the clear skies. Radiation cooling to 12 below. But Sarasota, St. Petersburg, Naples, Florida, up to 82 beautiful degrees. A few showers skirting along the southern periphery. Slick pick, though, running from Indiana and Iowa with some freezing rain, snow in Michigan. And it's all working in our direction. Just looked at the latest surface charts, and it's starting to rain pretty heavy in western Pennsylvania and New York, and it's all moving in. And there's a low out in here. It's caused some very heavy snow off the coastline. And in Norden, not northern, but Norden, California, 110 inches on the ground, 56 inches of snow since Monday, would you believe? I'd call that a bottomless base. Pretty tough to dig all the way down to the bottom through that snow. And it's still, would you believe, snowing out there, and we'll do so for the next day or two. Late night satellite, oh boy, I'm trying to speed tonight along. What am I thinking about? Early night satellite, looking at the cloudiness out through the west and then southwestward. And you can see it's pretty impressive and there is a lot of moisture starting to be tapped from the Gulf and pulled northward. To the north we can see mostly cloudy skies now developing across New England, clear to the south, but everything's running from southwest towards the northeast. And therefore, all that moisture out in New York and Pennsylvania will be moving in our direction. A lot of people with the spring break coming up and a lot of people traveling. How about your Friday travel troubles? This is the way it'll start out. A lot of slick stuff running from northern Maine, central areas, and then back on in the Great Lakes. It'll change over to rain in the southern areas back into the Ohio River Valley. Then, oh boy, nice, dry, dry, much of the country, simply dry, not much going on, but slick stuff in the northeast, then off towards the California coast will be rather rough with more snow and some of the higher elevations, rain along the immediate coastline, and very, very chilly as well. Outside our studios, temperature 24, dew point of 9, relative humidity computing out to 45%. Barometer 30.53, still over 30 and a half inches, but it is falling. Winds out of the south and southeast at about 10 knots. And your skies are mostly cloudy at the present time. And that's pretty much the picture across much of New England as well. High today got up to a pair of threes, the low of minus two. That should be in the mid-30s and upper teens, so well below normal. 30 in Holton. Off to the south, 24 as you head off in the direction of Bangor, 27 Augusta, 34 in Boston. Southerly winds should be pumping up slightly warmer here. It is warmer than yesterday. 30 in Burlington today, thumbs up. Tomorrow, thumbs down as we bring the precipitation in. And a pair of threes also reported off in the direction of Hartford, Connecticut. Back in history on this date, a coastal cruncher, March the 7th, 1932. Barometric records from Virginia all the way to New England. Block Island had a barometer of 28.20 inches. Incredibly uh, low barometers. Also in Boston, 28.45 inches. And 53 mile per hour winds at Block Island. Despite all the winds and the big storm, there was very little erosion occurring. So a rather strange storm, but certainly nothing like that today. Although we do have the moisture starting to move in from the west. Out in the island, northwest winds minus 13 Gander to minus 12 in Stephenville. And it is quite clear. Contrast all the clouds they've had for the past month or so. Just some clear pockets. Now the northerly winds in Sydney with minus 9. Blue arrows running on in the direction of Yarmouth where it's minus 3. Then the wind shifting.
into the southwest across uh, New Brunswick, minus 3 to Chatham, St. John's minus 4, and it starts to warm up Cirrus Sea, we're calling it. Those are Cirrus high thin clouds, and they usually mean precipitation within 24 hours, and this will be no exception. We'll check out the details of the forecast and the marine scene coming up right after this. Well, I told you last night we had a full moon, and this month it's designated as the worm moon at 914 last night. And some people have different renditions of this. One loyal viewer out in Monson, Maine, Susan LeClaire, this is what she says it looks like. The full moon, and you can see the moon. This is the worm moon with a question mark. And the worm, if you look very closely, this worm actually has a scarf and air muffs. Oh, what it can do to people. Look what it can do. Bring out the oddest in people. Well, that's her rendition. Perhaps that's what she was seeing. I hope she had a good night. Some of us were seeing worms as well. Jim Morris perhaps eating a few. I don't know. It was only <laughs> Thursday night. It wasn't the weekend. So maybe next time. We'll see what happens by next year. The Marine scene depicting a small craft advisory in effect. Winds south, southwest 15 to 25 knots. Shifting into the west at 10 to 20 knots. Seas will be building to 3 to 6 feet and lowering tomorrow. And the visibility lowering as well to 1 to 3 miles. You weather some snow should really change terrain along the coastal waters. So your forecast, Bangor, Brewer, and vicinity, thumbs down after today's thumbs up, clouds converge. Let's look for snow to develop late at night, and that's well after midnight, the way it appears now, around 2, 3 a.m. perhaps. Temperatures will be falling down into the lower 20s with those winds out of the south and southwest. Actually rise a little towards morning. For tomorrow, we'll call for a snow or a mix of snow and sleet and freezing rain and rain. Not too pleasant a day. There could be a slight sunbeam, nothing really to cheer about. Highs should be in the mid-30s. And again, most of it in the morning, then a slight break, perhaps. For tomorrow night, not all that great with some snow. Light, well, a little bit shaky on that. We'll have more at 11 with weak winds. Lows in the upper 20s. And for Saturday, the improvement begins as the precipitation ends. Some clearing. Highs will be near 40. Sunday should be the better of the two weekend days. But it's a little bit shaky on this forecast, just how much we're going to get. It looks like less than a few inches, not a big storm. But uh, we've said that before. And Yesterday, you <laughs> said sunshine, and now you have to swallow that. It was a big change. came out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, we shouldn't have to swallow a foot or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking at some snow moving and nothing too much. I'm still You've trying had your to get foot over that. in your mouth long I'm enough. still trying to get over that worm move. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Harris. We'll warm out of that one. How are you supposed uh, to follow that? I don't know I don't how you're supposed to follow that. <laughs> don't, don't we have some exciting action, though, tonight at the uh, yes, Bangor Auditorium? Yes, we do. Uh, Class A yeah. semifinal games, a couple of big rivalries, and uh, mm -hmm. close, close loss for the Celtics last night, too. Tornado, the most powerful weather phenomenon on Earth. Tornado was derived from the Spanish word tornar, meaning to turn, and they do just that. They can contain winds of nearly 300 miles per hour, tossing trees around like they are toothpicks and cars like they're nothing more than matchbox toys. Today, the 60th anniversary of the worst tornado ever to release its fury on the United States is known as the Great Tri-State Tornado of 1925. It sliced a path of death and destruction 219 miles long and one mile wide, moving northeastward through the Mississippi River, through southern Illinois, and Indiana. The result, 695 people died, over 2,000 injured, $16.5 million damage, and that was in 1925. One reason for the death toll being so high is because there was no functioning meteorological warning system with regard to impending severe weather. Now, with a rapid advance of technology and communication skills, hopefully a disaster of this magnitude will never be even close to repeated again. Clouds may blot out the sun entirely by the end of the day. A balmy breeze, highs in the lower 40s, and over the weekend we'll have that front in and out. There could be some showers or flurries, most warm weather to the south, and we'll be stuck here in the north as it's been much of this year. We'll be watching it closely, but it doesn't look all that bad this weekend yet. Ronald Allen Harris. <laughs> rah, rah. Huh? <laughs> Thank you very much for that uh, enlightening quiz. We appreciate it. I'm sure it'll stick for a while. <laughs> okay. Ronald is us up next. So are we going to see fair or better than fair weather for this fair? I'll tell you, it just isn't fair not to have nice <laughs> weather for this fair. I don't know how else to uh, say it, Ken. Uh, I think tomorrow uh, there'll be a lot of smiling faces, lots of cotton candy out there, good, good. selling, and uh, nice weather to get on the old Ferris wheel if you're not afraid of heights, of course. Uh, a lot of better weather moving in after tonight. Out in the Midwest, though, I'll tell you, the Mother Nature continues to gun them with sizzling sun. Here in the East, we're getting gunned, too, but with blanks. I'll try to fill those blanks for you, and I think I will, coming up right after this. 
Well, if you're a weather lover, this is your night, not because I'm on your TV screen now, but because New England is seeing all kinds of weather to speak of, everything but the kitchen sink. Let's show you the reasons for it, and we'll take a look at what's happening via the surface scenario today. And we have a cold call only here stuck in the northeast, 16 degrees this morning. Caribou, Maine, that's the third time this month they've had a record low, and that is an incredible record for them. Very, very cold there, plunging in from Canada, and that's slowly going to be receding off to the north. Warm wall down in here, would you believe, was in the 30s in central New York, while at the same time, Elmira, New York, today was 84. That's the contrast along this very strong wall of warmth. Back on the other side, it is fantastic. And I mean fans are flying out there, keeping them cool, real hot stuff. 91 up into Mason City, Iowa, in the 80s and 90s all the way into Minnesota. At the same time, Caribou was 16 this morning. You know, Rapid City, South Dakota was all the way up to 58 for low. Warm is so early in the season. And the flakes are beginning to fall out in Oregon. They'll get four to eight inches. Winter storm watches southwest Montana mountains. You know, they could get three feet of snow in an early spring snowstorm. This is the way the weather system looked earlier today with snow an inch in Montpelier, actually in Lebanon. That was what canceled the game for the baseball team out at UMO. They were canceled. It'll be better in Burlington tomorrow as they warm up, but this cold front's going to slowly sag south with big block to the north, keeping the cold air in. This high on the east coast continues the roast cooking out in the Midwest, but it's going to be slow to get in here. 30s across the northeast, 50s tonight's lows. Look at these 60s bulging all the way up to the north. It'll be cold out in the Oregon area. We're spreading into Montana with some snow as well. Look at this 80 degree line dipping down here, but all the way up to South Dakota and Minnesota, where it's near 90 degrees, much of Iowa, the warmth spreading in all the way on in the direction of the East Coast. The East Coast, you ask, in the satellite shot from 23,000 miles in space. Here's the finger of cloudiness here. Otherwise, lots of gorgeous skies, nothing really to talk about except a lot of heat and humidity. Even on the West Coast, not too bad, except in the Pacific Northwest. Here's your cloud chill. There is some rain and some snow, mostly in the higher elevations, and uh, that's going to be a bit of a problem out in that area as well over the next couple of days. Now the broad view showing lots of clear skies in here, toasty temperatures, tall as well, well into the 80s and 90s. The Pacific moisture and the Atlantic moisture up in the northeast, those are the two trouble areas. Down in the Hawaiian Islands, they're clearing out after a spat of some showers. And look at this, a nice slice of clear skies all the way well out in the Pacific. No problems to be had for the next couple of days out there. Outside our studios, look at that temperature, awfully close to freezing, flirting with 32. It's 33 now. The dew point's 32, and when the dew point and uh, temperature are very close, it shows in the relative humidity of 96 percent. It's moist in the barometer 29.88 and it is falling. Winds are out of the south at about five knots and the skies at the present time are on the cloudy side. As I said, all kinds of weather across New England. Now, the high today, first of all, was 50. The low of 23, that's seven below normal. We now have some sleet and rain in the Bangor area just ending, but it's snow and rain in Bar Harbor. There's been very heavy rain down in Portland mixed with snow, I understand, as well. And 36 degrees, 36 in Concord, 35 Lebanon. Mostly in the 30s throughout here with some drizzle. Unidentified flaky objects, I guess you'd say. We don't want to see these. We don't want to identify them either. But there's some snow around the area. Nothing really accumulating to be reported at this time. And I do think there's a low developing right around Portland, right in here. You can pick it up in the winds where the east down in Burlington they're kicking into the northwest down around Hyannis and the southerly winds as I mentioned here in the Bangor area on in the direction of Calais. Now back in history on this date we were talking about 1896 when they fried it up it wasn't snow it was real cooking weather outrageous early heat wave 92 degrees at North Connecticut it was 90 degrees at Middletown and even Bridgeport Connecticut saw the big naughty 90 so real hot stuff back in 1896 out in the island minus five in Gander to minus one in Stephenville the northwest was big, big storm up in Labrador, and a big Icelandic block is causing all the cold air to seep south, what we call this retrogression in the atmosphere. That's going to keep the cool air in on the northeast. Flurries are scattered about much of the area. The clouds crying some snow. Minus two out in Sydney, minus one Halifax, one Truro, and three in uh, the direction of Yarmouth. We see the clouds cuddling out in here. The solid cloud bank now running through Fredericton to Yarmouth, and that's moving on in the direction of the east, and they could get some showers of rain or snow before dawn as well. We'll check out the forecast after, first of all. How could I forget this? We have sky scan stumper. Wouldn't let you go to bed without this one. Which way do you think the winds blow around a low or a cyclone? I showed you a low on the map. I just gave you a hint if you were paying attention. You'll get this one. A clockwise, B clockwise, counterclockwise, C both clockwise and counterclockwise, or D. It depends on the time of the day. We'll have the answer to that and the local forecast for you coming up right after this. 
Well, we'll take a look at that Skyscan Stumper, and nobody really got it here in the studio, and Ken Suarez wouldn't even answer. He knows how I picked on him last week. He stayed quiet this time. Which way the winds blow around a lower cyclone? It is C, clockwise and counterclockwise. It depends which hemisphere you're in. Well, we threw a little twist in there. Northern hemisphere, they're counterclockwise. Southern hemisphere, they're clockwise. Has to do with one of the Coriolis forces, which is right of the wind in northern hemisphere. Now, if you said that it was has to do with the time of the day, I guess uh, you've overslept, or you should be sleeping, but thank goodness you're watching. Anyhow, for that fact, if you did get that right, well, spin around clockwise or counterclockwise on me. South-southwest winds, 15 to 25 knots tonight. Variable later on towards morning north tomorrow, 5 to 15 knots. Seas average 2 to 4 feet, 1 to 3 feet tomorrow. The visibility 3 to 5 miles. And we have a risk of some of those showers of rain or snow continuing with the variable winds. High tide was at 10.09, and we have a low tide coming up 4.23 tomorrow morning. So the forecast the way I see it for Bangor Brewer vicinity, with the waves coming ashore, wouldn't it be nice to take a dip into that? Well, if you're a polar bear or something, you might be able to do it, but it's crazy. It's kind of cold out in that water. I know Ron Lesnett would do it. Look at these temperatures tonight, low to mid-30s. Snow and rain showers. Huh. Springtime in Maine, you got to love it. Tolerable temperatures, though, compared to last night's low 20s with the gales. Now, for tomorrow, we'll call for the fog to burn off, optimistically, with sun strengthening. Now, I'm certainly not calling for 100% sunshine. There'll be a lot of clouds around, but with some sun and some luck, we will get up to the lower 60s with light westerly winds. For tomorrow night, star-stamped skies, and as I said, worth a lot more than 22 cents for any astronomer. Nice skies, a couple clouds floating, lows in the lower 30s, and the way it'll appear for Saturday. Outdoor delight. Clouds will combat and highs will be around 60 degrees. Again, off to our south and west, 70s to near 80 as far north as Connecticut and uh, Rhode Island as the warm air comes up. It'll just bump into us and we'll warm up even more during Sunday. So for the big canoe race right now, looking pretty good for Saturday. Burlington for tomorrow, the big baseball game. If they can finally play, Mother Nature will let them play. Looks like it should be better as well. So any outside activities, including canoe races or fairs or anything else, take a sweater at least. Take a sweater and then, you know, you'll smile. And then you'll enjoy it. Enjoy it. Finally, you can get outside after we get through this wintry mess tonight. Okay, thanks a lot, Ron. Talking about sports and activities, I understand that the Celts fans held their breath for quite a while tonight. but Ron, it's hard to believe. A little frost last night gets up to 70 degrees today. That's what Maine weather's all about. Right. Quickly changing. We get a little sunshine and it just makes the frost a memory. And there was a lot of frost down to 32 here in Bangor, but many areas in the 20s last night. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the last time we see that for a while. That's the good news, but we may have to put up with some showers. So we'll call today a winner of a Wednesday. Now the question is tomorrow, will it be winning or whining? I know you won't be whining. We'll find out, right? <laughs> we'll find out, you bet, <laughs> right after this. As I said this morning, there were a lot of widespread frost, but it was worth the cost cashing in on a beauty of the day. How are we going to describe this day? Well, let's go to the National Weather Map and see what we're talking about. We'll say, hey, picnic power, beautiful day. Get out there and enjoy lots of sunshine near 70 degrees. Pack the old peanut butter and jelly and a few cans of soda or what have you to refresh you. Beautiful day. Light northwesterly winds near 70 degrees. To the south, showery shape and quite a bit of warm and humid air, and that's sparking up some very heavy thunderstorms. Severe thunderstorm watches until 8 o'clock running south. Southeastern Michigan, western and central Ohio. I'm a wee bit concerned about this during about Friday. More on that shortly. Further to the south, they're really concerned. It's yucky, ducky, heavy weather. Showers, thunderstorms, Rio Grande City. Over five inches of water. Mission and McAllen, Texas, would you believe, had many roads closed due to flooding, and flood warnings continue down in the far south. Well, out to the west, 44 degrees. Up to the north in Burley, Idaho. And to the south, the hot spot crowned with it. An appropriate name, Imperial California, at 97, 2 o'clock. Dry sky with question marks. Would you believe they saw blue in the sky up in the northwest? A rare event for them with usual lots of clouds. We'll take a look at the frontal features on the map, and we have a double barrel blast. One front right out here, the second front carved out, running right on down through the Florida Peninsula. Now we can see by tomorrow that front will be shifting northeastward. We may get into this Friday as the warm sector grows, and therefore I'm going for a pretty warm day, and hopefully that'll be what happens. Out to the west, look at this. The cold shape, 20s and 30s, and a delightful drape running from the Carolinas down to Florida, where it'll be mostly in the 70s and 60s. Temperatures, well, long range prediction shows mostly normal through the midsection. Above normal precip for New England from mid May to mid June. If that happens, we need it and we're probably going to get it. So says Robert Dixon of the Climate Analysis Center. There's the clouds in the east. The west shows mostly clear skies. A few clouds breaking out out in Idaho with a few showers. Nothing too severe. Clear out in the Pacific except for a stringer of clouds off of British Columbia. Large view is showing the big apostrophe <laughs> raising a little whoopee as well. You look closely. This is a big apostrophe. You see it right in there, and that means a well-defined system and a lot of showers developing outside. Outside our current studios, though, the temperature is 68. Do 
dew point of 28, a fire spread, and that shows, look at that relative humidity, way down there, very dry at 22%, barometer 30.08, and it is falling. We've got winds out of the south and southwest at about 10 knots in the skies. Well, we've got some cirrus clouds. Meteorology talk for some high, thin clouds in the skies. Those usually tend to mean that there's precipitation within 24 hours, and this probably will be no exception. To the north, we find 65 in Caribou, out to the west in Greenville, 62, 67 in Holton, 68 here in Bangor, 67 Bar Harbor. High today of 70, low of 32. Because of the cold low, we average below normal, two degrees below normal, should be 63 and about 43, respectively, high and low. 45 atop Mount Washington to 57 in Boston, cool and bean town with an easterly wind. 62 down in Hartford to the north, 71 Burlington, 70 Montpelier. A lot of high thin cirrus clouds out in here. These aren't too serious yet, but these cirrus clouds will be tomorrow with showers. So the wispies are working and they will slowly move in during the rest of the balance of this upcoming night. Now we're back in history on this date, May 15th, 1834. I'll call this one a May monster. Greatest May snowstorm of all times for New York and New England, especially the interior. Half a foot of snow in the Berkshires. Would you believe one foot to a foot and a half heavy, heavy snow, even upwards to three feet near Newbury, Vermont, and it was only 35 degrees in Nantucket, way to the south, despite the relatively warm waters of this time of year, comparatively speaking. So very, very cold and snowy, but that was way, way back and now just a memory. We'll take a look. That was in history. How about some mystery for this date? Explosive hail. Would you believe exploding hail? Morning of November the 11th, 1911 at Columbia, Missouri. Shortly afterwards, there were two or three flashes of lightning and thunder, followed by a fall of large hailstones, which on coming in contact with windows or walls and pavements exploded with a sharp report so loud as to be mistaken for breaking windows or even pistol shots. And that was brought in by W.G. Brown, again, back in 1911. So hail can actually explode, one theory, due to the fact that there's a lot of stress on it as it goes through large temperature anomalies in the atmosphere. The stress, when it comes in contact with any pavement or anything, kaboom. So it can be a little scary. We had hail around here, but I don't think it was exploding a couple of days ago. Out in the island, oh, the flakes are abating. Four degrees gander, 16 mil with the light northerly winds. Clouds tending to crack up out there, but they're not laughing too hard. Five in Sydney, northerly winds, 11 tro, 12 in the Halifax. Yarmouth, 11 degrees Celsius, light winds as well. Light and floppy across New Brunswick, where it's 17 in Chatham, 15 St. John's. Say hello to the high clouds as they're moving in. And they may have a couple of showers tomorrow, but nothing too big to deal with either. We'll check out my forecast and the beach and boating scene for you coming up right after this. Well, for coastal Maine and New Hampshire, the beach and boating forecast, this is the way it stacks up. Winds south, 5 to 15 knots. Then south-southwest during tomorrow, a little stronger, 10 to 20 knots. Seas average 1 to 3 feet, visibility between 2 and 4 miles. The reason it'll be kind of variable, there'll be some haze and showers around. High tide Bar Harbor, a little after 9.15 this evening, and a low tide coming up little after 3.30 tomorrow morning. So the forecast, checking out Augusta, ready to bloom. And I understand these are dogwood trees, or so says uh, one of our directors here, Bill Mason. If they aren't, his name is Bill Mason. I believe they are, though, and they'll be blooming. Highs will be jumping uh, warmer tomorrow, but tonight falling into the mid-40s, a much milder night than last night with weak winds and clouds accompanying the area. For tomorrow, we'll look for accent on the clouds. And some shrug off showers, and if you like myself or Ron Wolf, you'll be able to shrug them off. No big deal. Go about your job. No big deal. Highs around 70 degrees with a little bit of sunshine, especially in the morning. For tomorrow night, we'll look for a mild one with showers, drizzle, and fog around, though. Lows near 50, so very, very nice night in terms of temperature. But watch out for some showers and carry the umbrella along then. And then the outlook for Friday. I'm being optimistic. Hazy, humid, warm, and muggy. Showers and some thunderstorms possible later in the afternoon. Highs near 80 degrees. It's a little shaky on the weekend, perhaps some more showers. So it's, it's a close call on Friday as the front's going to be near us, depending on the sun. If we don't get the sun, it'll only be in the 60s, and that's what the difference with the sun. 20 degree change. I'm going for the sun and near 80. We'll hold you to that. Uh, I still got tomorrow. It's not etched <laughs> in stone yet. <laughs> Did good today. 70 degrees, hit it right on the button. Remember that if it doesn't work out Friday. <laughs> I'll do that, Ron. Thank okay. you. Gary. I know everyone in Greenville is looking forward to that night. Now, last weekend, okay, well, this past weekend, yeah. Sunday, I wanted to get out, change the oil in the car. It was nice. The minute I got out, it started to rain, Ron. I go back in the house, and the sun comes out again. All like that all day long. Yeah, off and on showers, but that was pretty much what we expected. Uh, kind of a cool day, only in the upper 50s with showers. and uh, Not the day to sit out in the sun. It really can make no. you frustrated from time to time. But uh, by the end of the week, it may be more prone towards uh, sitting out in the sun. But it'll be on the cool side. Now we'll talk about a cool morning. Gave way to warm temperatures across the state. We'll call it a case of the temperature jumpers. But tomorrow, we're going to have what we call thunder bumpers. It may cause you to give some jumpers. I'll tell you all about it right after this. 
Well, today the sun was in and out. Tomorrow it'll be mostly in, but we may have some lights out, perhaps some power outages as some thunderstorms roll through here. The reasons for it can be seen in the upper level flow, the guiding flow for today, showing a churning out of Canada, some pretty chilly air. We're more on that shortly. Call today a Monday that was mighty fine, warming up nicely. Nice warm wall out to our west, well into the 80s into New Hampshire today. Only 46 degrees out in portions of Gwynn, Michigan. Very, very chilly out in that area. And that cold air is coming in for the second half of this upcoming week. Bit benign down in Texas, a little gracious for Mother Nature, some showers. They need them badly on the East Coast. Jacksonville with about a half an inch of rainfall. They're not getting the widespread rain they need, but some scattered shower activity. 94 was the hot spot in Avon Park, Florida, earlier this morning. Then a lashing line, a tornado watch put out by the National Weather Service running from southern Oklahoma, central and southern Texas. Pretty good thunderstorms. Iowa Park had a pretty good one. Boy, a uh, golf ball size hail out in here. Some heavy weather out in the Great Lakes thunderstorms as well. Those could pay a visit to us tomorrow. And not sunshine, stunshine. Third day in a row. They're stunned with the sunshine out there. And would you believe tomorrow and the next day out in Washington and Oregon, they'll have more sunshine. They don't get it all that often, but it's headed their way. East Coast sectional satellite from 23,000 miles in space shows you a cloudy coil. It'll tend to wet our soil tomorrow with some showers pummeling on through. The West Coast, no major problem. The fog moved back out to the Pacific as the sun broke through, burning it off. Some clouds out in the Rockies causing some showers and thunderstorms. The broad view, heavy thunderstorms. Oklahoma down to Texas. Here's the showers moving east off of Florida and the heavy showers out to our west to pay a visit during tomorrow. The conventional weather map, the current one showing, here's the cold front with a boomery band right on down to Texas. But by tomorrow night at this time, here's the front. That boomery band will give the wet sand. If you headed to the beach, watch out. Showers and thunderstorms later tomorrow as that front hard pressed to move off the east coast. Look at this. Cold bubble, 30s and 40s tonight's lows. The rest of the country, no trouble. 60s right on up into New Jersey. This should read 1984. Change the digits and you get a 90 year difference. 1984, Kentucky, Virginia, Tennessee, they had 10 inches of snow, unbelievable. Back on this date one year ago, it really came down. Not coming down right now. Temperature of 68, dew point 47. Same numbers for the humidity of 47%. Barometer 29.88, and it is falling. Winds out of the south at 10 knots, but they're gusting upwards to 20 knots. A few scattered clouds in the skies, and that's pretty much the picture across much of New England. High today got up to, oh, about 68 degrees, low of 40. That's about average for this time of year. Should be 64 and 45 when you average them out. An average day across the area. Warmer to the west, 71 Greenville, 71 in Augusta, and look it out in the Granite and Green Mountain State. 83 in Concord, 83 Lebanon, 82 Montpelier in Burlington, 79 in Boston to 82 in Hartford. Call this a warm wall, and this warmth is all coming up. Kiss us. Later on tonight, with the warmth moving in, southwesterly winds and porting it up in our direction as that warm wall will get a long-distance call, and we'll answer to that with some warm temperatures during tomorrow. Now, back in history on this date, 1892, way back on this date, snow fooling, no fooling, heavy snows in the north, 28 inches, that's right, over two feet and then some of snow, accurately measured at Stratford, Vermont, high winds with much drifting as well. Very wintry picture way back in 1892. So it's been wintry on this date and many years past, including back in 1984 with all the snow way down to Kentucky. Not snowing out in the island, but it's a bit cool, especially in Stephenville, only nine, about 49 Fahrenheit. Southwesterly winds 17 out in the direction of Gander, about 12 in Deer Lake. Where there are clouds, it's much cooler, like Deer Lake where it is 12. And the clouds are accompanied by a few scattered showers. Sydney, 16 to the south, 17 Halifax, 20 off further to the south, 13 in Yarmouth, 21 to the north, that's 70. So there's some sun and fun, and 21 from Chatham, also Moncton and St. John, Fredericton, southwesterly winds importing in the warmer temperatures. We'll check out my forecast and that all-important beach and boating forecast for you coming up right after this. Well, we've got big Memorial Day weekend coming up, and with that coming up, we talk about gardening. Let's go with some garden gossip. You can talk about this. We'll teach you and tell you what goes on, how to forecast while standing in your garden. We talked about clouds last week. How about checking out how fast the winds blow by standing in your garden? You can check it out, and there's many scales which do this as well, one known as the Beaufort scale. If you'd like to know more about that, you can send in, and I'll tell you all about it. And I'll send you a scale of that. Just send in a self-addressed stamp envelope here to Channel 7, WVII-TV, 371 Target Industrial Circle. Ten miles per hour, the leaves will move a little bit, and the weather vane will tend to turn. A small flag will gently unferry. And also, 20 miles per hour, you'll note small branches moving, trees sway. You can't read the Sunday paper. You didn't notice that yesterday with those winds hustling out of the west. And 30 mile per hour winds, you must lean into it and push a bit to get through it. Stronger than that, well, again, if you want to know more, send in a self-addressed stamp envelope. Again, that's what you can check out. Write it down, jot it down. You'll be able to tell what the winds are from standing in your garden. Garden gossip. Beach and boating forecast. Winds southwest 15 to 25 knots and gusty tonight. Shifting into the west tomorrow. Seas will build 3 to 5 feet. Visibility variable to near 3 miles. Your weather 
Look for some showers around from Eastport to the Merrimack River and up to 25 miles offshore. There is a small craft advisory in effect. Beware, Mariners. High tide 12:13 tomorrow morning, and we just had a low tide about 10 minutes ago. So my forecast for Bangor Brewer and vicinity showing the UMO sheep, and they're not going to go uh, to this forecast, I don't think. Well, however they do it. That's why I'm a meteorologist. Some call me a sheep. <laughs> Let's look at the forecast. Star cloud conflict tonight. Some spotty showers around. Lows dropping into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees. For tomorrow, look for sporadic sunshine, but that'll help to spark up some thunder bumpers later in the afternoon, along with some showers. Some of them could be heavy. We'll have more on this later this evening. Highs near 80 degrees with the help of sunshine. It'll be a bit humid, much like it was earlier last week. But tomorrow night, Showers will be around, but mighty mild lows won't break. The mid-50s, it'll be in the 60s much of the night with a pretty good southwesterly wind. And then for Wednesday, we'll talk about showers shedding. Then the sun succeeds during the afternoon, at least some sunshine. Highs near 70 degrees, and then much cooler for the second half of the week. So it's going to be a battle pushing this front offshore. But we're going to punch it and finally get it out of here for the second half of the week. But quite a few showers starting tomorrow right into portion of Wednesday. Watching that video makes me want to have some lamb chops tonight, Ron. Lamb chops. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Please, at the Humane Society. Please. I'm just kidding. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Carrie? Well, the weather may sound a little bit gloomy and so